Welcome back to another episode of Morning Coffee with your host, Rick Alexander. I'm at Rick Alexander underscore or at the Morning Coffee Podcast on Instagram. If you want to work with me, if you're interested in coaching, enrolling in the Clarity Academy, having me come speak to your organization, then you could just slide into the DMs there on Instagram. It's probably the best way to do that. Or go to rickalexander22 at gmail.com. Send me an email. Let me know how you'd like to connect and what you're thinking. And we can see if the products and services that I have are a good fit. Speaking of products and services, I was in Northern Virginia speaking with Ryan Munsey and we decided to create a workshop to teach high performers how to think because we actually gave it, we actually came together to do a talk at an Air Force base back in Colorado last month and it went so well and we realized with his analytical approach and my philosophical approach together, we can really help people to understand the things that are happening in their lives and how they can sort of think in a way that will give them more performance and ultimately help them be the human that they wanna be in this world. And it's easy to get stuck if your mindset's not in the right place for that kind of thing. So we've decided to package this. So if you have an organization that you'd like us to come speak speak at or deliver this information, uh, again, just hit me up on Instagram or shoot me an email. What we've created is a workshop on how high performers think, and we're going to give it to military bases and corporate organizations around the world. So if you're interested in having us facilitate that workshop or seeing what all that entails, then please feel free to reach out to either of us and we can get that set up. In today's show, Ryan and I are talking about a lot of the things that make high performers high performers and how to think about your life. So you'll get a good idea of some of the things that we have been conceptualizing and thinking about and talking about in preparation to start giving these workshops. So I think there's a lot of takeaways and nuggets in this one. So without further ado, Morning Coffee, episode 411. The last time I had Ryan Muncy on was on Lionheart Radio, episode 100. So a lot has taken place since now and then. I hope you guys enjoy this show. We'll talk tomorrow on Morning Coffee. Denver being the first time that we gave this talk, was there anything that stood out to you as glaring that like you were like, damn, I didn't, that you learned either from maybe from the audience or from giving the talk or just any kind of like really big takeaways? Yeah. Um, two or three come to mind. And I think the first one that really stands out is I think the one that is most relevant to this conversation. I think it's the, the single biggest factor driving both of our decisions to build this into something that we can do more with. Mm -hmm. And that's this, that is the statistic that you shared with the number of deaths, uh, from combat since 1999. Yeah. Uh, was it like 500 and 5,300? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so it was like 5,278 when I first looked it up. Right. That's and people that have died in combat in the military. And, and of course, since 1999, we've been in three, two major conflicts, three fronts, if you include Syria, not to mention all kinds of little in tribal fighting in Africa and things like that. Right. We're, we've been busy. We have been. Right. Um, and, and I, I think the struggle is, is to, to share the rest of that story without minimizing the number that is the 5,000. Totally. Yeah, yeah. Right. Because it's not about minimizing the combat deaths. Yeah. But the staggering difference. But there's a, there's an element of that, that you do expect, right? Everyone that joins right. the military has a, and you know, we're going to talk about value, but everyone in that joins the military has in their value system, the something along the lines of service or patriotism or nationality or country above self. And, and because their value system is set up that way, they know that the ultimate sacrifice is something that they might pay. Right. Right. And, and you know that that's, that is a very real possibility when you sign your name on that line. Right. Right. What you don't expect is... You'll to, survive and kill yourself. 23 to 1 ratio. Right. Did you do that math? Like, no, I, I didn't do that. I, I had, yeah. to, do, I had to, to figure out what that ratio was because so, it's just... The, yeah. So, so the rest of this statistic is... 128,400 at the time you did the search yep. and it's probably growing even faster than the other number. 
Uh, but that's the number of suicides in the U.S. military, both active and veteran, yep. uh, since 1999. Yeah. That is absolutely absurd. Totally. And unacceptable. Yes. Right. And I think, so that's the thing that, like, when you shared that, like, I knew we were there for a reason. I just didn't know that the mental health and uh, the all the things that we're both so passionate about, I just... Right. I knew that those were things that, that the demographic we were in front of uh, appreciated and, and talked about and, and valued. I just didn't know that the gap existed the way that it did. And, and so if you do 120, 128,400 divided by 5,200 and change, um, probably shouldn't use that phrasing, um, but totally. it's, it's 23 to 1. Right. So for every one combat death since 1999, there have been 23 suicides. Right. And I think to your point, like that's what you don't expect. Totally. Yeah. And, and I mean, because if you think about it, you know, you know, what's funny is last time we did a show a couple of years ago, probably on one of our channels and we were, when it was happening, the whole uh, Colin Kaepernick thing had just started. Mm -hmm. And so there was like all this, uh, this stuff in the media about people kneeling for the national anthem and everybody sort of took like a hard stance on it. And it became like a polarizing issue in the media. And I remember you and I, it came up in a conversation. I don't remember why. And there was something about it that really bothered me. And I wasn't really good at articulating it at the time. And what I realized is, Oh, because it's not the front leading issue that we have to deal with, right? The front leading issue is that people are taking the exit far quicker than they should. And, and there's something along the lines of like, there's something that everybody understands, like the sacredness of life. Mm -hmm. Like we all get that. Like there's something like the, the point of life is to live. Like there's something really deep about that idea. And so when you have people that are taking the exit early, you have to ask yourself, okay, so there's some construct here that's incorrect. Like we're setting something up that's not serving people. Yeah. And then you outside of the military, you got like the average demographic or the fastest growing demographic of suicide rates is is girls between the age of like 10 and 16. It's like the sad, I mean, there's nothing more sad than that. Wow. And you know, the thing that I took that really, really got me from, the, you know, this giving this talk is just like, as we're, we're breaking it down, because really at the end of the day, like you and I were talking pre-show, one of the things that I think this talk does, and one of the things that I think I want to do with my message, you know, at all, is there's people that are sitting there and they're holding up, you know, you get two, three decades into this life. You're 20, 30 years in. Well, shit ha has not worked out for you at this point, right? You've, you've lost a little bit of the, like, the sparkle, a little bit of the, like, you've seen stuff not work out. You know that things aren't, like, you know, not all that glitters is gold. You know things like the grass isn't always greener. Like, you're just not so wide-eyed, right? Yeah. And you, you've, you've taken off the rose-colored glasses. You have, like, yeah. Like and you, you now know the ways of the world. Totally. And if you've really gotten in the world, like if you, especially if you've been in the military and you've really seen some like destruction, some malevolence, some evil, then the chances of you be growing cynical in light of that are, are astronomically high because your mm -hmm. worldview is like the world you've gone through mm -hmm. essentially. And so, and so people are sitting there after 20, 30 years in life and they're holding up their life and they're like, yeah, it just feels broken. Like these are the broken pieces of my life. Right. And it's like, I realize like the work that we do, it's like, no, no, I'm going to walk over and I'm going to show you like, oh no, see the piece goes together like this. It's actually a puzzle piece and it fits together like this. And like, that's what your life could be. And then when you put those pieces together, what you find is the whole, the picture that you get and that you look at your life now is so much better than you could have conceptualized it. Whatever you felt like was broken even if that had worked out, all of those things had worked out, it would be such a small degree compared to how good, how extravagant the canvas looks if you take all the broken pieces and put them where they go. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so when I saw, when I was, when we talked about this in Denver and we're like going through the talk and I'm seeing people sort of, you know, because every once in a while you drop the one idea that sort of unlocks an idea for somebody because that's all we're doing. We're looking for the insights. It's going to help people sort of take their life and conceptualize it in a way that it's actually productive, mm -hmm. right? Remember, not broken. It's like, you just got to figure out how it goes together. Right. And so in light of these statistics, like something like the, the suicide rate and all these things that to me are just unacceptable, in light of all of that, I'm actually really hopeful that like the pendulum is just down right now. And so it's like, we're, we're suffering at such a level, but it's, if you look at the rest of life, like it, the information age is incredible. We have so much open source technology. You and I can do whatever we want with our lives. Right. And we figured that out. Not everybody has. Mm -hmm. And I think we're in a point now where the misery is sort of, we're, we're such a, we're such a victim of our own constructs yeah. 
that I'm hopeful that this sort of expansion in consciousness and us and people like us that are making people more aware of what their life could actually hold, well, my hope is that the pendulum's gonna swing back the other way. It's actually gonna be just as good as maybe it is rough at the moment. So I've got a question for you on that. Sure. Um, we spent time together, it's been about 10 days since we were in Denver together. And between then and, and this today, time on the whiteboard talking about all this, I see a huge, I don't know the right word, but like difference change in you since the last time you and I spent considerable time together in person, mm. which would have been before Donna and I left Virginia Beach. For like two years ago, me. You, oh, a year and a half. It was a little over a year because we left in July of last year and then you got out of the military in like October. Right? Totally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. October, September. And I know that you've done a lot of deep work and a lot of soul searching, consciousness yeah. exploration. Like, yeah. What do you attribute most to your ability to, it's not that you're on a different path now than you were when we were having coffee yeah, and, not, and chatting, not, yeah. but your ability to gonna... see all the pieces and, and synthesize and, and put them together and even to articulate it for other people is light years past where you were yeah 15 months ago it's good that you say that all right appreciate or, that or not even that, that long right like yeah. 11 months ago yeah, yeah right and it's been really cool to watch totally and, and i'm really happy for you but i'm just curious appreciate. what do you think has been the biggest factor in that for you all right two i'm can i decide to yeah. accept the answer yeah. cool so first one is uh there's not there is not a stone that i will not on that i will not turn over mm -hmm. And people, you know, basically, listen, your worldview is a reflection of, like I said it already, the world you went through. So if you're like, if you have a cynical worldview or if you have a positive worldview, it doesn't even matter. What I could do is we could talk back through your life and I could point to different things that you've gone through that have made you believe the things you believe, right? And so what, what I started to realize is I was... I was, there was success that I wanted to get to. There was like a level of, or, or even a, a mode of being, we'll say, that I wanted, like a lifestyle that I wanted, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I'm living it right now. And I was like, okay, so I'm not getting there. I'm clearly trying over and over. And so there's some sort of block. So I got to figure out what that block is. And so what I figured out is if I turn over enough stones, eventually I'm going to find the answer. And, and I'm like so relentless in my searching. Mm -hmm. I think what takes some people 30 years, I was like, I'm so impatient and I'm so like, you know, I'm so hell bent on, to, on like yeah. getting what I want to. And so go, overturning that, I think what happened is I looked in enough mirrors that gave me the ego death I needed to become who I needed to be. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in this talk, one of the things that I talk about is like, hey, you're solving the problem of life. And then so you ask yourself, what's the problem of life? And it's like, okay, so you're born into this life. You have no appreciable skills, really, except you're adaptable. As a human, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. And so you have the ability to scan for information, find out what information will serve you so you can adapt to that environment and then be successful in it. That's what humans can do. And so I was like looking around and I was like, okay, so if that's the case, how can I replicate that? And so, uh, you know, before that, there's two kinds of growth growth, I think. There's inner ego growth and then there's growth. What I was trying to do before that was inner ego growth. And what I would say that is, is you, you take a step back and you look around and you say, okay, what are the variables that I could manipulate in my life to get a desired outcome for my life? I want my life better, right? That's, you know, that's like all really built in the ego. It, it's a, and it's a me-centric view. Exactly. Yeah. And then I got to the point where I tried to do that for so long and I ran up against so many things that I had to I had to almost come to this point of surrender to be like, okay, you know what? I just want to serve. And so where do I need to grow in order to be fit for service truly, not based on the design or model that I think mm -hmm. people need from me, but what do people really need from me? What do I have? Like, what are my strengths that I can really lean on? And so when I talk about the problem of life in our talk, what that is, is you're here, you have no appreciable skills. What you have to find is the right environment and challenges that are going to allow you to wield your metal against them so that you can like craft who you've become, who you're going to become. Like humans are, the way that humans, I think great humans are made isn't by, it's not the pressure of a diamond. It's like the pressure of a blacksmith. You're just cranking away and you're wielding against yourself and you're figuring out what challenges because without the right challenge, you won't become the right person. Right. You know? And so what I found is I was out looking for all these challenges in ultra running and all the things that I was doing before. And I realized like, well, I have a mindset that's actually kind of set up for that, right? It's that's getting uncomfortable in a way that I am comfortably getting 
You know what I mean? And most of us like that. Most of us that talk about being out of your comfort zone, that's actually not true. You just like to be discomfort, uncomfortable in the way that you're comfortable. Right. Right. Like if it's ice or, you know, ultras or whatever, like you're, you're cool with that thing, but put you in an awkward conversation. If that's not your thing and you don't enjoy seeking discomfort. Totally. So what I discovered in the process of transitioning out of the military is that the problem of life for me in this stage of my life was this emotional block that I was running up against. Mm -hmm. And I ended up needing a a full on ego death in order to like get through that. And that's what the difference has been. So was that, was that both of the, like you said, there were going to be two, was that two things? Yeah. So the first one was my like relentless ability to just turn over stones. And what I mean by that is like, I got coaching um, I'm really, I have really heavy spiritual practices. I also uh, experimented a lot with psychedelics and I've like become very knowledgeable on them. Um, on top of that, just reading, meditating. Like yeah. the thing I would say to people is you actually know what you need to do. Yeah. You're just not doing it. And that was right. me too. I knew what I needed to do. I just wasn't fucking executing. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Right. And you just can't build off that because you don't have a foundation. You know, it's like I I had to bring into alignment all of the things in my life so I could really grow, like eating. I'd fall off the wagon constantly eating. And it's like, well, you're building off a shit foundation if you're putting garbage in your body. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It all, to me, it's like how you do one thing is how you do everything. So it's got to all be synergistic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I'm glad you mentioned like those specifics because I think in your initial answer, like that's some really deep work that's almost impossible to do on your own. Yes. Right. So totally mentors, uh, reading, learning, watching a lot of new information. Yeah. Uh, the things that point out what our blind spots are. So we do this thing in the workshop that, that you got to experience where when we plot our strengths and weaknesses, you know, when, and we put them on the quadrants of competency and yeah. then we say, we, we do, it's kind of a trick question and we say like, you know, where would you plot your weaknesses? And then, you know, point out like everything that you wrote as a weakness, you're already aware of. So it cannot go in the, quadrant where you are unconsciously incompetent Mm -hmm. because you don't know about those things right you don't know you suck at those things you need a mentor you need that epiphany that aha moment to point out those blind spots and so like like you said i mean you had you had the mentors you had the um the consciousness exploration the psychedelics i would also be willing to bet that one of the other things that has helped you is the daily podcast yeah like can you talk about how much the daily act of, of, and I know you don't necessarily record them every single day. You probably batch them. Yeah. Sometimes, but still having to put something out every single day that forces you to create content and, and go into your mind and get past like the surface level stuff. Totally. That was the challenge I needed because the me that started on podcast one was not the kind of person that could regularly put out a podcast, mm-hmm. you know, in 400 plus episodes, I've missed three that didn't come out at one thirty AM on that day. And so, um, yeah, it, I mean, recording episode 400, it was like literally like 1145 at night. And I was like recording. I'm like, this is perfect right now. Cause like, <laughs> you know, nobody ever sees the like 1145 at night. Like, right. well, I said I was going to do it. And it's like, this is who I am now. Right. It's not a question of whether I'm going to put out this podcast. I'm the person that puts this podcast out. Yeah. So I got to figure that out. You know, that's the problem that, that I needed to wield myself against. But uh, yeah. And so those reps help develop the voice. But I would also say that's why the Ryan Munsies of the world are so damn important because we're walking around with blinders on and nobody knows it. All of us all the time because your awareness works that way. You know, it's like so the way that you make it really clear for people is that quadrant because then they lay all of their activities, strengths and weaknesses out and they look like, oh, damn, you're right. I don't know what I don't know. Right. And then the way that I the, that I recognize that I talk about it, it's like the Alan Watts qu- quote. He says, uh, Every, your ordinary everyday consciousness leaves out far more than it takes in. And I just think about that. I'm like, exactly, right? Like, because if it, if it didn't, you'd be God. And so the fact that you're human means that you have, it wraps around something and everything else gets left out. And that's why if you pick up your phone on Instagram, you ain't doing shit else. Right. Because your, your awareness is, is captured, right? Good movie, same thing. And so uh, that's why the, like, people like you are so important in the world because there, someone has to sit down because otherwise... 
you're, you're in this scenario where you're like, okay, this is my life. And it's like, it does feel broken. Things haven't worked out, right? You need someone to show you that there are, si there are lanes you're not looking at. There are other avenues, possibilities, things you could do. Yeah. And that's the role of the mentor to me that's so important. And honestly, psychedelics were the exact same role. It, all it did to me was change my perspective. It was like, hey, you're looking at the problem wrong. I was like, oh, I see. Yeah, it, it just gives you a totally different perspective, a totally different vantage point on not just the same stuff, but potentially more. It's it's a different lens uh, than what we're used to. Yeah, for sure. And and like you just need to know that people have come before you and they've looked they've they've been where you're at. You know what I mean? Seven billion, like we have seven billion people on the planet right now. I can't remember in my in my book I wrote about how many people have died, but like we have the biggest data set on death ever. Like we yeah. understand the process of life and the end and all of it, right? Yeah. And so it's like, but lean into that. Realize like, what am I missing? That's what you, you got to constantly ask yourself, what am I missing? Yeah. And I think people like you, you just hold up the mirror in the right way. You know, you hold it at a different angle and they're like, oh, I see what I'm missing. Yeah. I, I like that analogy of holding up the mirror. I mean, I think that's, it's actually a note. I was showing you some of the notes I made last week. Um, and one of those notes was that I, th I think part of this consciousness awakening that we're in the middle of, uh, or, or maybe at the beginning of, I think is being accelerated by social media because social media forces us to see ourselves individually and collectively in that mirror. And it shows us both the great and the not so great. Yeah. And as we always talk about, and, and we've got this built into our, our upcoming talk, you know, awareness creates choice. Yeah. So we see that we're forced to, to reckon with that. We have an awareness. What do we do in that moment of choice? Yeah. And, and you know what the good thing about that is, even if you don't make the right choice, you know about it, right? The conscience never goes away. So it's like there somewhere deep down, you know, you made the wrong choice. Okay. It's going to tear you up until you make the right one. That's the problem with the right path is it kills the people that know about it and aren't on it. Like mm -hmm. just mentally, you know, and then at the same time though, the playbook is there. Like, it's just waiting for you to step into that, you know? And I think that's what happened with social media. Cause it seems like we're figuring it out now, right? Yeah. It's like sort of the equilibrium is starting to equalize. Yeah. At, at first I think it was a, like you're saying, it was a mirror of society. And we were like, whoa, we're like that. <laughs> like Kardashians, right? That whole, that whole, like there was like a, a boom in, in facade essentially <laughs> like the Kardashians and, and Instagram and all these like, the, the, I don't want to use names actually. So all the name, all the names that grew up, like they were basically blew up and they were, um, you know, like shreds models that were, yeah. uh, what were they doing? Uh, uh Photoshopping. Photoshopping. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, I think we saw society and we were like, God, that's gross. That's us. And yeah. now we're starting like pendulums coming back. Right. And I have to think that the social media prevalence in 2019 is part of the statistic that you shared earlier where, you know, young girls 10 to 16 are this, the second fastest growing demographic of people committing suicide. Yeah. I've made that comment before to, to Donna that, you know, I am so glad we didn't have social media when we were growing Me up too. at that age, because Couldn't I mean, imagine. The, the pressure that you have to go through in middle school and high school to, to fit in and feel like you have to conform. I mean, our experience with that was without social media. Imagine like in today's world, like right. that would be, I, I can't imagine that. And, and you know, for the most part, I knew who I was by the time I got social media. Yeah. Like I knew, you know, I knew about where I shook out in life and stuff. And so, and it was still a bear for me to get my mind around and like right. to not leave up, like to not let the validation kill me and to not be so like wrap, you know, to understand, to put it in the proper context has been difficult for me. Mm -hmm. And that's, and I'm someone that understands myself, not a 10 year old right. girl that's like, getting boobs for the first time and getting bullied by some other girl and likes a guy, but he keeps pushing her into a puddle and like it's on social media. So you see it as a boomerang over and over for life. And you're like, this is my life and I'm never going to get out. Yeah. And that's, I think the problem in the first place is you, you don't feel like there's a viable route. And so you take the exit early. And I think the work that we're doing is, is just showing you like, no, no, there are exits everywhere. This life doesn't have to look like you think it has to look. Yeah. And I think that's, that's one of the things that we've built into, uh, this talk that I think ex excites me the most is, you know, that we're, we're not coming at this thing saying, Hey, we have all the answers or, or we're not saying, Hey, this is your answer. Like you and I both know 
a lot of those, uh, we've seen it in the fitness world. We've seen it in the supplement world. We've seen it in the self-help world where yeah. like, Hey, I've got your solution. Just follow this diet or use this plan or do this thing. And the rest of your life is going to be amazing. Well, we know that's not how it works. Right. Um, and, and I think the phrasing that, that you used and, and that we're using in this talk is, you know, that it is an invitation, you know, you're, you're not guaranteed anything. Right. Um, but we are presenting an invitation to you to pursue your greatest self, to answer to the call, to step into your greatness. And we're going to share the tools that have helped us and helped other people. Um, and that hopefully will help you. Yeah. And you know what I, you know what I wish too, is like, I, I think about this all the time. The thing I wish that I could say to people, if I had a platform, like, uh, well, I do, you a do platform, have a platform and I do say it. <laughs> um, but I wish I could tell everybody like that thing, that you think about within you that you think fucking separates you from people or makes you different or worse or that you beat yourself up for it's programming and it's patterning that's making you think that right yeah. the shakespeare quote there's nothing is right or wrong but thinking makes it so mm -hmm. right and so in your life it's your thinking that's making it so it can only be that if other people have lived and done what you're trying to do and succeeded in some great way yeah. then it was only the thinking that separated it right and that's why i've started uh building the rapper intro and the the little love poem that that we have at the beginning of the workshops that, that you and danielle got to attend so um it's it's basically reading and, and reiterating what you just said that you know all those self-limiting thoughts the the doubts the fears the psychological compounds from our thoughts the the movies or the narratives in our head like it's all bullshit none of it's true we can walk away from that any day we want, yeah. any time, because we made it up. It's right. in our head. Right. Like we're scenario. telling ourselves that story and we have complete control over that. Yep. And the moment you realize that is the moment that you become totally free from all those things that hold you back and bind you and hold you down and you can be, do, pursue whatever you want. It's the weirdest thing that we spend our entire lives just to understand that we're the solution to the problem. Yeah. Like we're the problem and the solution. Yeah. You know? And it's like, so you're going to start diving into Tao Te Ching and yeah. there's, there's a passage in there that, uh, I forget the exact phrasing of it, but it's something like, um, eloquent words are rarely true and eloquent truths or, or, you know, truths are rarely eloquent. And what you just said is something that we both agree on and talk a lot about that, you know, the problem is us, which means the solution is also us. Yeah. And it sounds just too simple to be effective or profound, but like for all the reasons that you've just talked about, it's, it's the single, it's the one thing that will set you so free and, and put you on that path right. more than anything. Yeah. Cause then as soon as you figure that out, you're like, oh, this is all me. So if I'm stressed, it's me. If I'm mad, it's me. If I'm right. angry, you know, all these things, if I'm sad, you know, it's like, cause you're going through shit all the time in the, in the world, but you have an ego that makes you think that it's because of you. Right. You know, I think the ego is the greatest cosmic joke of all time, right? Cause you're not the center of your town, which isn't the center of the state, which isn't the center of the country, which isn't the center of the world, which isn't the center of your universe. And as far as we know, there's a multiverse. So there couldn't be more space <laughs> around you. Yet you have a, your, your linkage, the way your, your yeah. computer is set up. You think it's all because of you. You think the guy that cut you off in traffic had something to do with you. Yeah. You know what I mean? He would have done that regardless. Like it, it just happened to be you, but it could have been any of the other cars there, he was going to do that. Totally. And so, you know, I look at nature as an example. It's like, look at nature. There's, it's brutal, right? Like, I don't know if you follow the Instagram page, nature is metal, but it just shows animals like ripping just the face off other savagery. animals. Savagery. Like savagery, yeah. right? Yeah. And there's a, there's a brutalness to nature, but there's also like an eloquence in the way that it all goes together and fits together, mm -hmm. right? It's like, and, and I always look to nature just to think about like, how am I conceptualizing my life? Because you look at the flower, right? It's like, it's so interest. It's so crazy to me that it knows, like, it doesn't know, but it, it it does what it needs to to pollinate, to poll to get the move the pollination over, to attract the bee, to do the whole deal. Mm -hmm. No one has to tell it to be like that. It's not. It just is what it is in order for the whole thing to work. Yeah. And I think if humans realize the thing that you think makes you different, you just be what you are. You be the thing that you are to make the whole thing <laughs> right. work. Play your part. Right. Uh, there's a story in, uh, there's another book I'll share with you before, before we, uh, before you leave, but it's called, uh, the book of awakening. 
and it's a daily reader. So yeah, there's I got a passage it. every day. I have okay. It. So Let's there's one, um, the, I, it's been a while since I've read it, so it must be early in the year. Um, but it, it, there, it's the story about a flower that, you know, when it is a seed, it can only grow into a plant or a flower if it leaves the seed, right? So it has to break out of, you know, the thing that contains it, like the world that it knows is the shell, the seed. Yep. And if it doesn't leave that, it can't sprout. Right. And then if it is planted and, you know, below the ground level, it can't continue to grow unless it leaves the ground and breaks through above ground. Mm. And then before it does that, it doesn't realize that like there's something above the ground. Totally. And so you have to keep leaving the confines of, you know, what you know as your safe world to, to step fully into like who you are meant to become. Yeah. Wow. And it's such a great analogy for like growth and development. That is. Yeah. And, and all of nature works in concert that way, you know, and, and, you know, this is going to sound esoteric and this is probably my, <laughs> more of my spiritual practice coming through, but like the thing that's in that seed is in you too. Mm -hmm. And that's what you have to remember. Like right. the, you have, you have the complete autonomy, ability, strength, everything you need to play your part in the unfolding of all this, the co-creation of it, whatever your belief system allows you to believe, just understand that like, you're not in this weird, see, we believe that we're in this, I think we tend to believe we're in an adversarial relationship with everything, right? The guy that cut you off, it's like, I got to get there before him, your boss. It's like, I got to, it's like, you understand that everybody here wants the same thing, right? We all want to evolve. That's what nature wants. And you are nature. You came out of nature. Your body is like, I, in that talk, I got a bunch of crazy <laughs> looks because I said, people say you came into the world, but you didn't. You came out of the world because you're made of all earth elements, right? So from a very literal perspective, like you, you're, you are nature. It's, mm -hmm. you know, and so I think that um, lean into that. Because that stardust, that thing that's in that is in you. It's We've all came from the same source in some mm -hmm. way. You know right. what I mean? Right. And that doesn't have to be spiritual. Like that could be literal. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's all the same stardust that makes all of this up. There's nothing on earth that's not made of earth. And so you got to understand like you, you just got to reframe the problem a little bit. Right. You know? And I think, I mean, almost every talking point or every statement that we've gotten into so far in our conversation really comes back to the title and I keep looking back I think I think our title is perfect you know this is about answering the call and as as we package this thing and and begin to roll it out like what about that opportunity excites you the most I see a whole bunch of people thinking that they're locked in a cage and they're not right. It's like we said, it's just your thinking. And so what I like to do, like, I love this idea of answering the call because all of your problems are an invitation in your life. Truly. That's actually the case. Right. And it's just your thinking that's going to make them the invitation or not like, or it's just something that's meant to oppress you. Right. And you can take that perspective, but life's super hard if you do. And instead, if you're like, well, okay, so why could this be happening for me instead of to me? Like life's always inviting you. And so you're called to adventure all the problems that you have, the things like for me transitioning out of the military and running into this real deep emotional rift. It was like, it's an invitation to live bigger, to like experience deeper, to be more human, to lean into the best parts of you mm -hmm. and to solve this problem. But if, but it's, it's not a guarantee. It's only an invitation. You don't have to, you have free will. You can do whatever you want. So, and so, and, and I think you have to do whatever you want for long enough until you fuck it up, until you realize like, it's time to answer the call, you know? And so I think what excites me is re is framing this stuff in a way, because when people are in the audience of this, I know that they're going through shit. Yeah. You're either, you're going through it now, you just went through it, or it's coming up real quick, or someone you know is going through it right now, and there's no way that that's not true. And so to just be able to frame that when it comes up of like, damn, okay, so maybe this isn't what I thought it is, right? Maybe this isn't the problem that's going to take me out. Maybe this is the thing that's going to propel me. Yeah, I think that's so well said. I mean, every one of us has, is, or will face adversity. Uh, you know, that's just a given. Catastrophe it's, even. Yeah. You're going to die. Yeah. And people that you know and love are going to die. All of them. And like, what, what better way to, I don't want to say deal with that, but you know, what better purpose than to give people tools to, you know, be more resilient or to better be able to use those as things that spur growth and development rather than derail them and move them away from 
uh, you know, what we're here to do. Right. And, and, you know, like, so in light of the fact that you're going to die and everybody, you know, is going to die and in the whole, in the middle, there's going to be a bunch of sickness and terrible shit that happens too. And it's like, but what if I could tell you that the thing that would make it all worth it is if you stood upright and took it all on a forthright manner and you accepted your call to adventure and you became the rock. So when you're in catastrophe, you know, the, you're the person that people can lean on because you've thought through this stuff and you've dealt, you're dealing with it in the way that we know that we're supposed to, you know, and then it makes it all worth it. And somehow this thing that's filled with pain and hurt and all the inevitable tragedy is just insanely beautiful. And that's what I was getting at with nature. It's like, mm-hmm. when you look at nature, there is that brutality. And there's also like that same intelligence is also like Havasu Pai Falls, the beauty of like just crystal clear water that flows forever somehow. Okay. Right. And right. so it's like, it's so like, where are you looking? You know what I mean? Like you, anything can be anything. It's your thinking that's judging all this stuff. Right. And so for, for us, like, I think just the opportunity to be like, Hey, it's not, it's just your thinking that's keeping you trapped. It can be different. You're going to go through hard shit. And I think that's the other thing that we don't talk about that I think is exciting to me. We don't really talk about what's not working in this life, right? Like we kind of shove it down yeah. and it's like, Hey, let's talk about the fact that this thing sucks sometimes. Like life's really difficult mm-hmm. for a lot of people more than they have the willingness to deal with too. Right. Right. And so I think just by opening that conversation up and being like, so maybe we got to deal, maybe we got to think about it different. Yeah. Or even just hold space uh, and give people permission to have those conversations, which especially in the military, part of the reason that we're going to be taking this talk to that group of individuals is because that is a, an environment where, uh, you know, admitting that stuff is bothering you is kind of taboo. Yeah. There's one emotion that's acceptable in the military and it's anger. <laughs> it's true. And, and it's not true for um, everyone across the board because your, mili- your military experience is very leadership dependent. Right. You know, you get a crappy leader, your life can be really tough. You get a really great leader, your life can be incredible. But like across the board, the culture, at least in the special forces community, which is what I could speak for, there's you you don't go to work and talk about your emotions like right. you have to be very good at compartmentalizing and that's and that's because you're going to do a very brutal job but we got it we just have to start talking about this stuff because if you're going to ask humans to go do the ultimate thing which is take another person's life then you've got to talk about what that's going to do to you right like you just can't you don't get to have both you can't be like go do my bidding and then forget about it right you, obviously because 128,000 we've taken the exit early right so. I mean, maybe this is something that we get into at the actual seminars and workshops, but I mean, what, what would you see as a first step in opening that door for people who want or need to talk about that or, or even if it's not talk about it, but move towards finding some sort of healthy resolution instead of feeling like they have to keep it bottled up until they choose to take the early exit. Right. So, I mean, I think part of it is the fact that if you look at the brutality that exists just because of existence itself and the beauty, then you could say, okay, so humans are the ones that are taking the exit early in mass droves. We're the one part of nature that has chosen to take this alternate route, right? Mm-hmm. And so you got to ask yourself, like, it's got to be the construct that we've created because we exist in constructs that we've all created over years. Mm -hmm. And maybe the construct worked for the level of consciousness that humans were at, but now it's not clearly. Right. right? And so the construct has to change. And so I think if you're just the individual that's stuck in the problems, then look around at your life and realize that all of it is a construct. So if you're stuck in it in any way, then there's a different way to do business. Like you can, you can live differently. You know, I live so much differently than like most people, like my nine to five does not exist. It's completely different. But, um, understanding that like, I'm the one that's with my hand on the helm, like I'm the one driving. So if it sucks, it sucks, but that's on me and I can figure that out, you know? And and then on top of that too, it's all the resources that we put into this thing that Mm -hmm. I think are super important because, you know, I can say like, oh, just change your mind. But if you don't know, like if you don't have the, the tools and the habits and the resources and the coach, like all it's got to all work together. I think it's such a, it's a multifaceted problem that I think we can, we're, we're at least offering different approaches to fixing. Yeah. I think I feel like we've done a really good job of identifying those things and and delivering. uh... Well, and the piece I'm most excited about, like 
really is like the piece that you bring, which is the intersection of physiology and psychology. Right. This idea that like, oh, we can attack this problem from different ways. And you do in the workshop, like we're going to, right? Right. And so to just show people that like, no, no, you have tools and you have them right now in your chair that can make your life different and better today. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. That's something that really excites me is, is to be able to bring that to a lot more people and a lot of people who need an awareness of these tools. Totally. And that's why I'm, we're almost the antithesis to a lot of the modern pseudo motivational movement, right? Cause you can go to a Tony Robbins seminar and you could feel really good about yourself and then you go home and now you're kind of like, you're going to fall back into whatever route for sure. Yeah. Right. Like that just doesn't work. You got to motivate yourself constantly. Right? right. Right. Well, what I like is at least the approach I think that we're taking a little bit. It's like, we're also looking at your life be like, Hey, here's a problem. 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 And you can fix them all right now. <laughs> so if you are, if you're actually the kind of person that's ready to change your life, then I'm going to give you like 15 or 20 things you could do today. You get those ironed out over the next six months and you're a different human. Yeah. You, I'm living testament of it, right? You just right. said it yourself. And I was already doing so much growth work. Right. You know? Yeah. We just, we, we all need to be led or, or shown which ones of those to prioritize. What's the right order? I mean, th this, I think this is one of my biggest frustrations is that this isn't taught in school. Like, why is this not education? Right. Totally. Like this should be taught in school, how to be a human. And I think it will be, I think we're like moving and that's, that's the thing that I'm saying I'm like hopeful for yeah. is I think like the constructs we built, they served us for a time, right? Cause now we have infrastructure and all this stuff, but now we're at a, our consciousness is collectively trying to expand and it's running into the infrastructure we've created. Yeah. And so now I think, you know, we have schools all over the country that are building factory workers and there's no fucking factories left. Right. So I think our, as our consciousness bounces off of that, uh, off of the, the rigid boundaries we've built, I think we're going we're gonna to plane out and figure out what works a little better for us. Yeah. And I think the, the you and the me and Danielle and all the people that are, are like out there in the tip of the spear, you know, it's like, it, it seems like anybody right now, well, anybody definitely could just start an online course and all this stuff. But it's, I think that's actually the beauty of it, which is like, if your message works, you're going to float to the top of that. People are going to, yeah, it's going to happen. Yeah. There's going to be a demand for it because there is a demand for that type of information and, and not just information, but the insight as to, you know, what is the important stuff and how do I use this? How do I implement it? Yep. And then the, the fear tactics that we use to build the infrastructure of, of where we're at in modern society are slowly not working. Yeah. People are like sick of, right? And so I think what's going to happen is as consciousness expands, as we understand a better what humanity is and what we're doing and where we're going, I think we're getting to a point where we're like starting to put our hand on the throttle in our own evolution. And that's never been the case before. So there's some serious growing pains that have to take place, but I'm super happy to lead the revolution in that. Yeah. This is going to be a lot of fun to see where this goes, what we can do with it. Um, for the folks listening, if, if you guys want to maybe bring us to either your military base or your private corporation, uh, organization, how do we want them to reach out and see if we can make that work? I mean, I probably either of our channels, either yeah. of our social, Just shoot us a message. it's a crazy how much business I do in the DMS. Yeah. 90% of it. Yeah. I, most of the talks that I've been able to set up have come that way too. Yeah. I mean, you can email me if you want or you, yeah. um, but like just. We were a pretty public figure, so. Yeah, email or DM. Yeah, if you're listening to this, you're listening to one of our podcasts. <laughs> You've got it. <laughs> or both. Right. <laughs> um, dude, so all right, as we wrap this up then, the last thing that I kind of want to, I want to edge toward you is based on the sort of, like, obviously we see a problem and we're like, okay, maybe this is the solution. And so we're going to start fitting it in there, seeing if it works. Is there anything for people that are listening to this that out of the stuff that we've done or maybe just stuff the top of mind for you, like what's the low hanging fruit for people to think about or do to like start if they feel like they're trapped? Cause that rut kills people. Yeah. Truly. You know, as I'm sitting here trying to come up with my answer, it reminds me of like, I, I could say any number of things, you know, and I struggle to identify sometimes what the low hanging fruit is for somebody that I don't know. Yeah. Right. Um, and that reminds me of the, the conversation we had on the phone a couple of weeks ago about like Jimmy Buffett 
you know, playing cheeseburger in paradise, you know, the things that, uh, the things that excited us six months ago or 12 months ago were revelations for us then, but today they're just something that's like filed away and, and they're not exciting anymore. And mm. it's just, Oh, that's just, yeah. Like that was cool. But when it was new, it was right. A revelation right. and it was game changing. And so as, as we all grow, as it, for those of us who are on our own edges, right. The things that we encounter and then integrate into, you know, our practices or, or closer into the center of our comfort zone, however you want to conceptualize it, you know, we, we can tend to put those things on the shelf and, and not share them, uh, because it's no longer, um, you know, powerful or, or exciting for us. But if it's your first Jimmy Buffett concert, it doesn't matter if he wrote cheeseburger in paradise 40 years ago, like you want to hear him play cheeseburger in paradise. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I think, I think that's a long wind up to say, you know, my answer would be as simple as this sounds, awareness creates choice. I think awareness, most of the problems that we've discussed stem from a lack of awareness. Uh, lack of awareness of how the construct limits our thinking, um, a lack of awareness of, you know, what the problem really is or what the possible solution is. Um, I, I think awareness is, is something that, again, it, it just, it simply affords us a better choice. Yeah. And in that moment, you know, then we, we either make the choice or we don't. But we know it's there. But we know it's there. Right. And, and I think a lot of times when people stay in a relationship that they shouldn't be in, uh, when they take an early exit uh, from life, when they um, you know, stay in a job that, that they hate, I think a lot of that stems from not being aware of alternative solutions. Mm. Right? And, and so I think, I think the low-hanging fruit is to focus on cultivating greater awareness, being able to operate with greater awareness in, in every situation. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I agree. I think, um, I think that there's a question that someone can ask themselves, which is if you feel stuck and you're looking to create that awareness, cause how do you create awareness when you don't have any, like that's the real hard part, right? Cause right. it is where you can't see, <laughs> right. right? And so no matter where you look, there's blinders. You can't see cause you're bouncing off your belief system yeah. in a lot of ways. And so for me, the, there's a question somewhere along the lines of what is the thing that you believe? What do you believe that makes you think you can't be happy? Like, that's the thing that I think you need to ask yourself. Like, you have some belief somewhere mm -hmm. that you think you have to punish yourself or you have to accept a certain quality of life or you have, there's something you've been led to believe that you have to accept. And I think you need to root out whatever that belief is and, and get rid of it, figure out a way around it, figure out how to coach yourself through it, how to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. The problem is you. And so there's something that's happening. There's a disconnect in you. There's some question. There's something you're not allowing yourself to believe that's keeping you from allowing yourself to be happy. Yeah. And when I, I think, when I think about it that way, the growth mindset or beginner mindset or stay curious, those are things that pop into my head. And I think it's however you want to uh, make that a, a, a value or, or however you want to embody that. Yeah. I think it's, it's some, some var variation of that, right. Yeah. Um, to continue to learn, to continue to, you know, ask those questions and look for, you know, new or different ways to, to do things. Yep. Yeah. Cool. I'll end with a quote from my newest book. Cause I keep doing that now. Uh, shamelessly plug it whenever it comes out, but, uh, who you become when you realize that nobody is coming to rescue you is who you were always meant to be. And so figure that out, put yourself in that situation. Let, like put the bumpers, pull, like let go of all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Nobody's coming to save you. This is you and it's your life. You have, a, you have an important role in the unfolding of it all. And life is constantly inviting you to play that role. It's always teaching you what you don't know in order to become who you need to become next, right? And it's doing that through failure and through pain and adversity and all this shit that you're ignoring right now or you're trying to get around is your invitation to live at a higher frequency or a higher vibration or to step into that role that you actually were here. Life's giving you the problem. It's giving you the challenges to wield your metal against. It's you that are choosing not to do that. 
I, I, I love it. Answer the call. Yeah. All right. Dope. Hit us up. Thanks, buddy. Thank you guys for listening. Thanks, Rick. Cool. Thanks, guys. No time for the wicked. If you're in my line, I'm going to go around the sign and still bring it. Sky is the limit. Out of my way. You can't get me down. No time for the wicked. If you're in my line, I'm going to go around the sign and still bring it. Sky is the limit. Out of my way. You can't get me down. There's nothing like a clear peace of mind. To overcome the hardships in life To sort out the wrong from the right Someone's in life But they can't get me down I got my own self by my side And mentally we gotta be free I see the wickedness coming full speed But I hold together like the ball needs the seam I'm trying to do something, not nothing You're trying to hold me back and that's fine Nothing you say or do is worth my time Good day to you, I respectfully decline And now I'm coming stronger than ever You say I'm a fool Say whatever I'm in it for the good vibes together And the love lasts forever No time for the wicked If you're in my line I'ma go around the sign and still bring it Sky is the limit Out of my way You can't get me down No time for the wicked If you're in my line I'ma go around the sign and still bring it Sky is the limit Out of my way You can't get me down